2020 was set to be one of the best years for roller coasters ever. And, well, something might have stopped that, but many of them have been delayed to 2021, as well as roller coasters that were originally meant to open in 21. So I'm going to talk about a lot of different coasters that are going to open next year and which one is going to be the best. Now first I'm going to head over to Florida because there are a lot of roller coasters opening in Florida. There is of course Iron Guardi, which I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about very much, okay, because I did kind of just make two videos in a row on that. So, <laughs> so it's a ginormous hybrid coaster and it's just Zadra, but... North America um, I, I don't want to talk about it I, I made a 17 minute long video on it alone ne next coaster so also in Florida we've got icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando and this roller coaster looks pretty cool and of course it has been forgotten about because of Anguazi and because of a roller coaster that I'm going to mention in a minute. So Icebreaker is a premier ride shuttle coaster with four launches and it has a very solid layout for a, a kind of family style ride. Not going to be the best of the year though. So let's move on to another SeaWorld Park. SeaWorld San Diego is also getting a new roller coaster next year and that is Emperor which is a dive coaster built by B&M. We pretty much know what this is going to be like. There's lots of this kind of style coaster around the mini B&M dive coasters like Oblivion the Black Hole and Valkyria which opened in 2019. This is going to be very similar to Valkyria, so again it's going to be good, but it's not going to be the best of the year. So going back to Florida again, as I mentioned, the other coaster that was overshadowing Icebreaker was Velocicoaster, which is a modern style Intamin Blitz coaster opening at Universal Islands of Adventure. And again, oh my god, this is another coaster that I talked about recently. So I did talk about this a bit in the video where I said that Lightning Rod was going to get RMC'd, and then I found out that it wasn't going to get RMC'd, and now after releasing that video, we found out that in places, it is going to get RMC'd. Look, oh, anyway, look, I've got sidetracked here. I was supposed to be talking about Velocicoaster. This is very anticipated. It's got two launches, it's got loads of airtime, and it's got some good moments of intensity and everything like that. Really solid all-round coaster, definitely going to be one of the best of the year, it's one to watch and I'm sure we're going to hear about it a lot next year because Universal Islands of Adventure is a very popular park so lots of people are going to have their opinions on it. Now I'm going to talk about another Intamin coaster and this one is also in the United States and this is Pantheon coming to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is a multi-launch shuttle roller coaster built by Intamin and is one of their newer coasters that's going to really show us what they are capable of doing and how they've changed. The shuttle launch section itself is quite an interesting addition to this kind of coaster. Right now there's not really many of these around so we don't know how good it's going to be. I think it's going to be pretty good but not amazing, you know, I think it definitely is going to be fun but it's not going to blow you away. Having said that, having a launch section like this is a good way to make a ride longer without having to use more track and the rest of the layout has lots of cool outer banking and airtime moments and off axis hills. It's a very modern layout for Intamin and it's definitely going to show us what they can do. But speaking about Intamin coasters, showing us what they can do now. Next year, also, the Intamin Mega Coaster at Wallaby, Belgium is going to open. And this looks like it is probably going to be the best roller coaster in Europe. Now, I definitely can't say that for certain because it's got some big competitors like Zadra, Helix, Taran, Kanan. So, this roller coaster is going to have to be really really good to do that and I think it has the potential to do that. I think they've finished putting all the track in for this and it's going to be about 3,900 feet long and 164 foot tall. So it is pretty big but this coaster is going to take the world record for the most airtime moments on a steel roller coaster in the world. For reference, Untamed which is a roller coaster known for having lots of airtime has 14 airtime moments. So this Wallaby Intamin coaster is going to have 
a lot of airtime. As well as having a few traditional airtime hills, it has also got an absolutely ginormous outer bank turn, and this outer bank turn does a lot of outer bank turning. From lots of photos and stuff, it looks like it's going to turn about 90 degrees outward banked. That's, that, that's, there's no other word for it, that's insane. Like Iron Gwazi, I have talked about this roller coaster a lot on the channel before, so I'm not going to say much more about it now. So I'm going to move not very far to a different part of Belgium, and I'm going to talk about Time Traveller, the Mac Extreme Spinning Coaster, which is a bit confusing considering the only current existing Mac Extreme Spinning Coaster is also called Time Traveller. This spinning coaster, as well as a, a lot of the coasters opening next year, has multiple launches, multiple LSM launches for that matter. So this technology is definitely becoming really common. With this spinning coaster, it's got lots of funky elements. I'm gonna say that. It's a bit weird. You, you go out to the station and do what's called a Jojo roll, but it's on a turn. So you kind of just do a barrel roll out of the station on the turn. It, it, it's got some strange elements. But this coaster does look really cool. I mean, these new Mac Rides Extreme Spinning Coasters are Honestly, a thing I'm surprised hasn't really happened before. I mean, you'd think there'd be a bit more demand for extreme spinning coasters, but we're only just seeing the first few of them, and they look very good. Another Max spinning coaster opening next year, which isn't extreme, is Storm Chaser at Poulton's Park. Um, I don't know why I mentioned that. Probably just because the UK is actually getting a new roller coaster. <laughs> But also in the UK is a 10 inversion roller coaster at Flamingoland, which is just going to be a lot better than Colossus. <laughs> Definitely not the best opening next year, though, so we'll move on. Another coaster which is opening next year that isn't going to be the best is Dragon Slayer, which is an SNS 4D free spin opening at Adventureland in the States. That's kind of cool, I guess. There's another 4D free spin opening at Motion Gate Dubai called John Wick Open Contract. Yes, John Wick from Fortnite. <laughs> John Wick from Fortnite is getting a roller coaster. Anyway, the next eight coasters I somehow managed to completely forget the first time I recorded this video, and it's why it's going to take almost a month for me to upload this. Because after I found out they weren't on here, I couldn't be bothered re-recording it. Oh no, oh stop, no! <laughs> so just bear in mind when I debate between the four at the end that these next eight coasters were recorded after that. So over in Energylandia next year, Abyssus is opening. And this is one of the biggest newer generation Vacoma coasters to open, and it looks really good. In 2017, we got a teaser of what Vekoma were hoping to turn themselves into, because in the same country at Legendia in Poland, they built that coaster. And now, not very far away, we're getting Abyssus, which is an LSM multi-launch coaster by Vekoma. So it's a Vekoma shockwave, and it's over 1,300 meters long. And I think I'd be wasting my time if I said any more and it looks amazing and it's a really solid all-round coaster that is going to be ranked up there with with coasters that are some of the best around anyway next is another big coaster opening next year that was hyped up a lot and this is jersey devil at six flags great adventure in america which was originally supposed to open in 2020 but it got delayed but it's a single rail coaster from rmc and we saw two of these open in 2018 which had very short compact layouts but they really packed a punch they were insanely whippy and more fast paced than anything we've seen and we've been waiting for ages to see a bigger version of this, to see what they can do. Although this bigger one might not be quite as crazy fast paced and whippy as the first, it definitely has a really strong layout and it, it is quite a similar thing to the normal RMC hybrid coasters that came before this because it has the same sort of elements like a zero G stall and that kind of thing. But despite people saying they think this might not be paced as well, 
I think it's going to be an amazing coaster. If you look at some angles of it, you can tell that they've really profiled it to make sure that they maximise the airtime. And it's come from RMC, so I'm sure it's just going to be pure insanity. Just a heads up, I won't debate this at the final four at the end because I've already recorded that section. But although I do think this coaster is amazing, I don't think it's the best opening next year anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Anyway, next we've got Stump Pilot, which is another RMC Raptor, the same as Jersey Devil, but it's the original, more compact layout. This is coming to Silverwood, and I think it's a great fit, it's small and it's really high frill. I mean, we know what these Raptors are like, so there's not much to say about it because it's a clone, but I don't mind seeing these clone because they're still some of the absolute best coasters on the planet. And after RMC put lots of hard work into developing these single rail coasters, Intamin decided to develop their own. I'm not saying this is necessarily a bad thing, it's just a bit funny because they have obviously copied RMC but the competition is good, and that's because Big Dipper, very original name, is a recently announced single rail coaster by Intamin opening in Australia next year. We really weren't thinking we'd see one of these single rail coasters by Intamin open next year, but they are, and they are going to be quite different to the RMC Raptors because they're launched. And this one's going to be opening at Luna Park in Australia and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how good this one is because this is very compact and it looks like it is going to be a custom layout. There's some interesting layouts on there but there's also some things that really annoy me. It's Intamin again with their stupid names. I mean, th this here, that's, that's not a wave turn. And th there are two airtime hills that don't give airtime. Don't know, don't know why you'd intentionally design like anyway it looks very good and it's going to be one of the most interesting ones to see how it turns out now also in australia we've got leviathan opening at sea world this is a large wooden coaster i'm gonna save time and just say that's what it is it's gonna be very good do you want to hear more about it probably not because this video is getting long so the last one in australia because surprisingly there's three new large roller coasters opening in australia next year Steel tight tape and type and don't know how you pronounce it, but it's but it's a clone of Blue Fire at Europa Park with a shuttle launch. Again, not much to say about that. Um, enough about Australia. So I lied because there was actually only seven that I had to re-record. So this is the last one now, and it's not another coaster because I was going to talk about Triple Loop at Indiana Beach, and although that's going to be a really good roller coaster, it's relocated, so it's not a new one. So there was actually only six I had to re. I just put my foot in a bin. But anyway, that's the end of the bit I've had to re-record. This video is getting long, so now it's back on to the original stuff. Sorry, this is extremely late. Now I've got two left, and they are both roller coasters built by B&M. Which, if you know me, grr, I don't like them. They're bad and boring. Um, so anyway, the first one is a B&M Hyper, which you might not know about. Now B&M Hyper coasters are some of the best roller coasters. B&M make, they have lots of floater airtime, and they are very big coasters. And there's one of these coming to Hot Go Dream World, which is apparently a thing. Um, there's not really much we know about this coaster, but it's got some big airtime hills like normal, but it does have a Shambhala style turnaround, that's worth a mention. At the same park there's also a wing coaster by B&M that's going to open next year, but that, that's not officially on the list, because it's B&M wing coaster, and I'm just going to say, they're not that great. So the last coaster on the list is a B&M inverted coaster, which I think is a bit interesting because they have kind of had their time and they were really just a thing in the 90s, but that really doesn't mean that they can't still open them because Monster at Gronoland in Sweden is going to open next year as well. And this roller coaster has been a long time coming. Like many other B&M inverts, it is amazing that they managed to fit this ride into the space it's in because Gronoland is right in the center of Stockholm. So yes, it is very crammed. And the layout they've managed to fit in here is really good. But guys, Bolka and Mabiard, really this is addressed to it's gonna have vest restraints isn't it i mean like every single roller coaster b&m make they managed to ruin 
by putting best restraints on. Let's hope they don't put them on the hypers. Anyway, B and M are bad section over. Which is the best out of these coasters? So now we've got through the main list, I'm going to create a short list. And this short list has four coasters on. Iron Gwazi, Velocicoaster, Pantheon, and the Wallaby Mega Coaster. And you might disagree with this, but for the sake of simplicity, Pantheon and Wallaby Mega are very similar coasters. It's just one has a bit of a shuttle launch section. And out of these two, I think the Wallaby Mega Coaster is the best. This is because reason A, it has more airtime. Reason B, it has a longer track length and therefore more variety of elements. And reason C, does just look a little bit better like you can disagree with that but that is my take on it so I'm going to eliminate Pantheon so out of the three remaining we've got Iron Gwazi the RMC hybrid coaster and then we've got two still modern coasters by Intamin which are Velocicoaster and the Wallaby Mega Coaster Velocicoaster and the Wallaby Mega Coaster are going to be very hard to decide which is better without going into it too much I don't really think I can pick a winner out of these two. Although having said that, I think Iron Gwazi is better than Velocicoaster, but I think the Wallaby Mega Coaster is better than Iron Gwazi. So, I mean, I say I can't pick a winner, but <laughs> I think one of them is better than Iron Gwazi and one of them isn't. So, maybe that means I do think the Wallaby Mega Coaster will be the best coaster open in the world next year it looks it does look amazing but it's a very close race between these three and i'm not going to debate that anymore the biggest positive to take away from next year i think is that intamin do look to be consistently bringing out amazing coasters because i mean look at that i picked a top four to talk about which was going to be the best opening next year and three of them were built by Intamin and next year has a lot of very good coasters opening so Intamin are just consistently killing it. That was me, that was the video. As always I'll be there to argue with you in the comments section. That's... we're done.